Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As the Arthur J. Kenya Dean, it is my honor to open the Charles Widger School of Law session of the 173rd Annual Commencement of Villanova University and the 61st exercise at which Juris Doctor degrees will be conferred. Father Joseph Calderon, Office of Mission and Ministry, will lead us in the invocation. After the invocation, please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be sung by Natasha Felder, class of 2016. And full of thanks, we ask your blessing on this group of young women and men that are about to begin their careers serving you in their vocation of lawyering. Give them eyes to see so that they might see the suffering and oppression of your people throughout the world, but also that they might never lose sight of the wonders and beauty of life. Give them ears to hear so that they might hear the cries of the poor and the innocently imprisoned, but also that they might never be deaf to the songs of hope and joy. Give them minds to understand what they see and hear. Give them hearts to love themselves, their families and friends, and all those who, even though they are strangers, need their love. Give them mouths to speak for those who are voiceless, and to speak to those who need to hear tender words. Give them hands to work for a world of peace and for a world of justice, without which there can be no peace. And may God bless each of us here with the vision of Gandhi or Isaiah, the integrity and character of St. Thomas More, and the self-knowledge of St. Augustine. Give us the love of Jesus and the courage of the Hebrew prophets. We ask all this, dear God, in your good and holy name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
On behalf of the faculty, I welcome and salute the class of 2016. I welcome your family, your friends, the graduates, because without your support, the class of 2016 would not be here today. Before proceeding, let me introduce the Reverend Peter M. Donahue, Order of St. Augustine and President of Villanova University. We gather here today to celebrate the personal and academic achievements of the candidates for Juris Doctor degrees, Master of Law in Taxation degrees, and to honor the outstanding professional achievements of our Medallion Award recipient. This year, the Law School is proud to present the Medallion Award to an especially worthy recipient, George Keith Harwinter Shell, Chief Marketing Counsel for the Coca-Cola Company, Todd Agard, Vice Dean, Will you introduce Mr. Shell? And Mr. Shell, could you please join us? George Shell's distinguished career has encompassed outstanding professional achievements and success in a variety of settings, including a commitment to public service. A graduate of the University of California, Santa Barbara, and UCLA Law School, Mr. Shell served as a staff attorney at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals following law school. After spending some time in private practice, he went on to work for the city and county of San Francisco, where he rapidly rose to become chief of general litigation. From there, Mr. Shell was named vice president and general counsel of the Oakland Athletics. For many of us, this would have been an ultimate career accomplishment. For Mr. Shell, there was still much more to come. Mr. Shell has held several different positions since joining the Coca-Cola company more than 20 years ago. As Director of Business Affairs in Coca-Cola's Marketing Division, he led negotiations for various sports and entertainment contracts, including the company's relationships with the IOC, FIFA, the NBA, Rugby World Cup, and numerous Major League Baseball, NFL, and NBA team sponsorships. He is currently Chief Marketing Counsel, leading Coca-Cola North America's marketing and advertising legal team support of the marketing function in the United States. From his government service work through his corporate career, Mr. Shell has continued his commitment to public service. He is currently chairman of the board of directors for the Council for Better Business Bureaus and is an inaugural member of the California Minority Council Program's Hall of Fame. Many of us first met Mr. Shell when he addressed the class of 2016 during its orientation three years ago. At that time, his inspiring and thoughtful words were the perfect herald to the inauguration of the class of 2016's legal career. Now, as our graduating class of 2016 departs and heads off into the next phase of its career, we are delighted to welcome back Mr. Shell. Father President, Dean Gatanda, and members of the class of 2016, it is my honor to present George Shell for the Medallion Award. Okay. All right, I get to go now. Great. So uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Dean Gatanda. Thank you, Father Peter. What a nice introduction. Of course, I guess I don't really need an introduction to you all, the class of 2016. It's great to be back here at Villanova. You don't know how thrilled and touched I was when I got the call to present to you today. You guys are the best. Thank you. And thank you so much for welcoming me back on this great day for you and your families. So, maybe it's just me, but three years went by pretty quickly, didn't it? It seems like just yesterday that I was looking out at all of you on your first day in law school, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and a little bit anxious too, I think, none of you quite knowing what to expect. And three years later, here we are. The end of law school. That is almost as memorable as the beginning of law school. And I bet looking back, you all had no idea what you were getting yourselves into. But it's all good, right? Just wait. There's more coming. Lots more. Now, note that I said 
that the end of law school is almost as memorable as the beginning. Anybody who's been to law school rarely forgets what it was like to be a first-year law student. I bet your friends and family remember when all of a sudden playing devil's advocate was something that you all did every day. And they had to be patient while you analyze everything to death. On the one hand, on the other hand, on the other hand. Oh, look, you know, at that tree root sticking up from under the sidewalk. That's a tort waiting to happen. <laughs> it's OK. I did it too. So now you are entering into another stage, the post-law school stage. I've been in that stage for over 30 years now. And like I told you three years ago, be ready to jump right into this next stage. Despite what others might tell you, the water is still fine. What I mean by that is that having training to think like a lawyer has great value in virtually every arena in business. Now, just like you all, I'm at an ending that is also a beginning. In a few weeks, I will be retiring from my great company, the Coca-Cola Company, and embarking on my own next career stage. Hold on for this quick product placement moment. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's in my contract with Coke, by the way. Oh, and there's something else. They're ju we just happen to have a Coca-Cola can that commemorates Villanova recently being crowned NCAA National Basketball Champion. <laughs> A marriage made in heaven, the cats and the coke are the real thing. <laughs> Ooh, got a sticky page. So, continuing on this basketball theme, now that it has become public at Coca-Cola that I'm retiring, I have been embarking on what I have playfully called my Kobe Bryant farewell tour. Then you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you saw Kobe being honored at all these NBA venues around the country where he played his last game before retirement. So I mentioned to one of my colleagues in Atlanta that I was embarking on my own Kobe tour. And he said, yeah, right, like you should be comparing yourself to Kobe. And then he said, well, maybe you could compare yourself to a Kobe steak. Or on second thought, you should be comparing yourself to a Trump steak. Look how thick and juicy. Oh, and, and actually, on the, on the box, it says the world's greatest steaks. Who would have thought he would have said that? So, oh, and by the way, it goes, whoops, it goes great with an ice cold Coke. OK, no more shameless product hawking, I promise. You all are beginning to travel what will be a very wondrous and fruitful path. And by the way, you all need to thank this great university, the dean, the faculty, the administration, the staff, everybody sitting here behind me for providing you the tools and, and maps to successfully navigate this path. So please thank them. And also, I think most of you also need to thank your parents for paying for this e-ticket ride that we call law school. So parents, thank you. Your parents know what an e-ticket ride is, by the way. And if you don't, please, please feel free after the speech to Google e-ticket, or better yet, ask Alexa when you get home. So like I did for you three years ago, I have some advice for you. First, after all the graduation parties are over, sit down and start to form your plan for your career. It may sound corny, but from the very beginning, I had a plan, thanks to my father, who drilled into his five kids from the time we were young, that you have to have a five-year plan. To this day, he still asks me, what's your five-year plan? Now, my aunt, my father's sister, who has lived most of her life in Philadelphia, is here today, and she can vouch for me on that. Hey, Aunt Jay. <laughs> My plan was pretty simple. 
kind of fits me. Create a dual professional path, business and legal. I kept this plan broad, but I filled in specific pieces of the plan as my career progressed. Second, when you get to the professional world, and you may remember this from what I said to you three years ago, make sure your work is pristine, well thought out, short, and to the point. Your work product is a reflection of you. If your work is sloppy, shoddy, or otherwise unintelligible, guess what three things people may start to think about you? Remember, we are all brands at the end of the day, so you need to be mindful to take care of your personal brand. Who you are, what you do, and how you do it will always be something people are looking to define about you. Stay one step ahead and think about how you're presenting yourself. Others will be judging you, and not just in court. And yes, there will be folks out there that despite your best efforts will be haters, and we know haters gonna hate. My advice is just don't give people a reason to hate. In other words, to use a technical term, don't be a butthead. <laughs> Do your best not to act in a way to create haters. Instead, be collaborative, supportive, and a team player. Develop that part of your personal brand so you can fend off hateration. Third, acquire as many mentors as you can and keep hanging on to those mentors like your life depends on it. Because at least where your work life is concerned, it does. Keep hanging on to those mentors, especially those who are willing to put in time with you. After over 30 years as a professional, I'm still doing this. Why, you may ask? Well, because in the real world, you never know when your ending is coming. And these folks, these mentors, can be a lifeline for you when you're looking for new beginnings. Plus, I know I need millennial mentors to help me figure out the myriad, myriad of ways I can use my smartphone as I drive down Luddite Lane. I do have a couple of millennial mentors and more than once I've said to them, you're kidding, right? There's an app for that? I mean, no, really. There's an app for cannabis delivery? <laughs> yeah, there is. The bottom line is you can't have enough mentors and more importantly, you can't ever think that you don't need mentors because you have everything wired. Trust me, you don't. And even 30 years from now, you won't have everything wired. In these times, changing technology, changing business structures, changing regulations, and so on, are happening so fast that in my view, no one can fully keep up. Fourth, always focus on networking, but not necessarily networking in a way that is constantly focused on getting business or getting ahead. What I'm saying is that your networking need, on, need not only be about getting your next job or promotion. You should also network in a way that helps you keep in touch with folks that either have a totally different point of view or a different experience than you. What you will find is that even where you may have differences with people, there are almost always areas where you have shared values. Or possibly these folks can provide you with some additional context that may help you down the road. Use these folks as a touch point as you face difficult issues and make a point to ask them to help you think through things and you do the same for them. Fifth, practice, practice, practice being a leader of self. For those of you who are from Philadelphia, that sounds almost Iversonian, doesn't it? You know practice, 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 right? Okay, anyway, this means that you should constantly seek feedback on your work your personal presentation, your communication style, and so on. Do your best to regularly look in the mirror when something goes wrong and ask yourself, what did I do? What, how, what part did I play in creating or perpetuating that situation? Once you do that reflection, the focus can then turn to how you can, can work to solve the problem as opposed to working to determine who else can I blame for this problem. Always look forward for the way out. Try to avoid looking back too long so you don't end up running into walls. And, I have, and have a sense of humor and patience about the practice of law. My business colleagues do their best to avoid legal like the plague and then can't figure out why they're plagued by lawsuits, legal issues, or regulatory problems. You also will need to master the skill of gathering information and passing it along to the right people in the most timely and understandable way possible. 
and do this without legalese. We lawyers tend to speak our own language that only we understand. So don't speak Klingon, speak plain English. Another very important point, please do practice active listening. Listen more, talk less. This is hard for lawyers, but do it anyway. You will be surprised at, at how much information you can take in when you are paying attention and not just flapping your gums. And when you have an idea that will help your business clients, make it seem like it was their idea. That's if you really want them to consider the idea. You know, kind of like how you already deal with your spouse or significant other. Wow, great idea, honey. I wish I thought of that. Sixth, do your best to create relationships when you get, to get your first job and try to do that on a human level. Of course, that may mean that you have to listen to some partner's boring war stories about some trial they had in front of Judge Wapner or some inane hobby they have. But listen for a chance to make a connection. And when you find a connection point, make sure to mine it. But don't be a creeper or one of those folks who tries to one-up someone else's experience. You know the type. The type that hears you climbed Mount Everest 10 years ago and says, that's great but I climbed it just this year after the Nepal earthquake raised the height of the mountain several feet. High five! Last but not least, and this is really important, I'm going to let you in on a key part about being a successful practicing lawyer. When you are asked a question where there's no way in the world you can answer the question or you just don't have a clue what the answer is, there's a universal two-word lawyer response that we all use. And this will not be a response that Siri or Alexa will be able to help you with. The two words, it depends. <laughs> this is a tried and true, all-purpose response to when the whole room turns to you to provide your insightful legal point of view. For example, George, is there a way we can do this without being sued? It depends. George, if I do this, am I, risk going, do I risking going to jail? It depends. George, are you going to go to jail with me? It, uh, no. <laughs> Here's where you have to veer off the it depends course. And just to be clear, it depends should only be used to buy you some time, but never should be your final answer. Otherwise, you might be asking your boss, hey boss, do I still have a job now after only using a two-word response to answer all questions? And you hope she will say, it depends. Ultimately, the best lawyers are the ones who make the leap from day-to-day -day counsel to trusted advisor. That word trust is important. Just recently, I was exploring with my colleagues at the Better Business Bureau how we define the word trust. We did this because, after all, our slogan is, start with trust. What I propose to the Better Business Bureau crowd, and there's a corollary to what you should look to achieve as counselors at law, is that the faith people develop in you will help you maintain trust over time. Why did I say that? Well, I believe that faith is the bestie of trust. And by the way, a baby boomer's use of the word bestie seems so authentic, doesn't it? just kind of rolls off the tongue. So what I mean by faith being the bestie of trust is that when someone has faith in you or has faith in general, faith can be the reason that someone sticks with you through thick and thin when there are times of plenty and when there are times of scarcity. Faith is something that we all as humans must work to maintain constantly because there are many things in our lives that work hard to subvert our feelings of faith. To me, for some reason, maintaining trust seems to be tougher. The giving of trust often speaks to being vulnerable. And when trust is broken, it often leaves the most painful of wounds. Loss of trust can lead to anger, despair, and even hatred. Faith can be a valuable tool to get us through the times when trust feels like it's slipping away. Now, I know this all sounds kind of sermony. And yes, I know that's not a word, but I'm a marketing guy. We make up our own words all the time. And my apologies, Father Peter, for possibly straying into your territory. Now, one of the biggest challenges you will face being a lawyer is dealing with your business colleagues' beliefs about what is right and what is reasonable. And you will need to remember in your efforts to get your business folks to be logical and or thoughtful, 
Good luck with that. That beliefs tend not to be about what you can see. Beliefs tend to be about how someone feels, often at their core. This is a very difficult concept for humans because in order to have a chance to be reasonable, we have to be self-aware about our feelings. Helping your business colleagues be self-aware is vitally important because we've all seen that feelings become beliefs, beliefs magically become facts, and those facts can very quickly move people to make decisions. And we, as lawyers, have to figure out a way to help our business people think logically through this conceptual process, knowing that feelings and beliefs may not always be rational or able to be explained using a calculation or theory. Man, that got deep fast. Okay, so let's come up for air here and bring it home. As I said at the very beginning of my remarks, what Villanova Law has offered to you is most certainly a gift, a gift that you all have accepted, by the way, offer, acceptance, consideration, reliance. I think I smell a contract, but no worries. There's no test at the end of my speech. That gift is the ability to, to be able to analyze thorny issues and help others solve their problems. As lawyers and counselor of others, your training will help you support business decision based on logic and reason. In a broader sense, this provides you the opportunity to be the bulwarks against the fires and bullets of fear and ignorance. Because whether we're talking about business issues or societal issues, the fire does not care what it burns and the bullet does not care what it hits. Left uncontrolled, fear and ignorance can lead to a world where fairness and justice struggles to win the day. But now you have the training and soon the power to be a positive force in the world of business and greater society. Now you must go forth and use what you have learned and use it wisely. And always ask the question, do I have all the facts? Am I or are my business people doing the right thing, the ethical thing? Know that doing the right thing is very empowering and has the potential to truly engage others to follow you. As lawyers, this is what we must do. And the better that we are in engaging others to follow a reasonable and ethical path, the greater reach our good works can have. Good luck to all of you, and I wish you all much success and enjoyment as members of our noble and honorable profession. Welcome to Fantasy Island, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shell, for those inspiring words. I now present Thomas Moore, class of 2016, selected by his classmates to deliver the student commencement address. First off, I just want to say, um, give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to stand before you all today. And good morning and welcome family and friends to the 2016's Well-Earned Celebration. Special welcome to Mr. Widger. We appreciate your historical gift. Before I begin, I need to thank a few individuals. Thank you to Mr. Shell for being our speaker. <clears throat> thank you and good luck to Dean Katanda, who's going to be moving on. Uh, to accept a new role as president at a university. Thank you to Dean Agard and all the Villanova Law faculty and staff for your help over the three years. And also thanks to Nancy Whalen, Nicole, Kate, Chelsea, Joe, and his team, each who are vital in making today run smoothly. I know this sounds like an Oscar Awards acceptance speech, but I promise it's not. <laughs> Most importantly, thank you to the class of 2016. I am truly humbled and appreciative that you chose me to be your voice on this significant day. In 1988, Villanova Law added a student graduation speaker to the annual commencement ceremonies. During the 27 years prior to today, no black student had ever been selected to address the graduating class. <clears throat> class, at this time, you didn't know you were making history, but you did. So today, I'm proud to represent my class, my fellow black classmates, and all the black students before me. So again, I genuinely thank you. So, a few things to get out the way. 
I'm one of the few Southerners here. Shout out to Sophie and Kelson representing Georgia. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, so my apologies in advance if any accent sounds different than what you were expecting. Also, I didn't tell my family or my friends I'd be speaking today, so surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> As we know, Mother's Day was this past weekend, but we all realize that mothers and grandmothers deserve way more than just a day to be recognized. So on our special day, class of 2016, let's give the women who raised us and played a vital, a vital role in helping get us to this point a hand. Fathers and grandfathers, you'll get your day next month. However, you won't have the public adoration at a graduation. <laughs> Over the past several weeks, I have received numerous suggestions. I couldn't accommodate them all, but don't be surprised to hear your name. Upon learning that I would be the graduation speaker, a fellow class member sent me a text that basically said, don't mess this up. <laughs> and another classmate told me, you better be good. So, Mr. Farser, Mr. Ms. Darfer, after I meet your standards, I'll be accepting cash donations at the reception. <laughs> Next, unless your name is Katie Palladino, Nicole Palladino, no relation, or Cynthia Bean, because they are too kind to do such a thing, all of us were guilty of selfishness towards our loved ones the past three years. So families and significant others, on behalf of my classmates, we apologize that we were cranky at times, we were too busy to hear your problems, and we apologize for missing special events. And to my little brother Tobias in front of this large audience, I apologize to you for forgetting about your birthday for a day. <laughs> Special acknowledgement to Ms. Williamson, John Williamson's wife, Diamond, Steve Bertil's fiance, and Cassie Justice's family, as all three of these class members already had children of their own. Each of them appreciate your support. Families of the 2016 class, none of us will be here without your support and your willingness to forgive us for our selfish actions these three years. We sincerely thank you. Now, class of 2016, like Drake said, what a time to be alive. For this next part, you can make some noise. So shout out to section A, section B, and the best section, section C. Now for some of us, the decision to attend Villanova might not have been as easy as it was for some of our supernovas, like Kathleen Vermillion, Megan Farley, and Catherine Del Rosso. Parents, ask your child what a supernova is. But even if you weren't a supernova, each of us had a deep reason for coming. Birex. We thank you, Birex, for picking our names out of those stacks. <laughs> Regardless of how you got here, we're here. And like Jay-Z said, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. So during our time, some of us have become experts in legal research, like Melissa Ruth. Experts in test taking, like Nick Needle. Experts in outlining, like Nicole Holden. Experts in all things IP, like Jess Watkins. Expert in scholarly writing, like Matt Coyne. Or an expert of law school in general, like Travis Dunkelberger. During our three years, each year brought its own challenges. During one L year, we had to make up about 10 days because of historic weather. First time in history where students were actually upset that we got school off. And there were, there were challenges for each section. Maybe you were in section A, like Alex Pakura, and you had to take one of those infamous Professor Dempsey criminal law exams. Sorry, Professor Dempsey, but the secret is out. Your tests are beyond difficult. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't need an honor code violation today. <clears throat> or maybe you were in section B, like John McCrossin, and you had to take a contract test that had multiple choice range of A through H. Yes, crowd, H. Again. Allegedly. <clears throat> or you were in section C like Amanda Tarvers, and in the midst of Dean Agar's property test, where an A is like 50 or 44% mastery, her keyboard stopped working. <clears throat> I mean, seriously, her keyboard stopped working. They had to come in and give the lady a new computer. <laughs> seriously, the gig is up, Dean Agar. Take the mask off. We all know you're a robot. No way a human can be that intelligent. <clears throat> Although 1L year was tough, we still created some fond memories, like sitting behind Sean Whitehead in contract practicum and being glued to his computer screen as he watched a classic WWE match. <laughs> now, in Sean's defense, 
He is graduating to JD in the NBA, so he's doing fine. <laughs> Maybe you had the opportunity to take legal writing with Cody Wade and witness him successfully fit the words Batman into his two-minute oral speech, or argument. Or maybe you enjoy the tune of our very own band, Tim Bittler, Sky Henry, and Brandon Hatfield, better known as ZZ Tort. Maybe at nine in the morning, while learning about torts, you gained a whole new understanding of what Campari meant. Isn't that right? Kasha, Dan Ackerrow, Jill and Andrew. You'll have to ask them for that story. Then came 2L year. Rihanna said it best. Work, 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 work. 24-hour exams, Paige Devine had two of them. Or in the fall semester, maybe you stacked your schedule heavy with classes like Brittany Daniels. Then there was 3L year. What happened 3L year? Some of us got jobs, like Kim Keenan, who secured her dream job at an immigration firm. Some of us got lazy, each student, insert name here. <laughs> and some of us got stressed about not having a job. All students without a job, insert name here. Regardless of your current job status, look at the bright side. VOS is 100% on the bar passage rate right now, so continue breaking and making history. What else happened? Oh yeah, the team who plays in this gym won its first national championship since 1985. <clears throat> parents, <clears throat> parents, whatever you saw on the news, those fires, people climbing up street poles, I promise it wasn't Rob Lavoie or Joe Vila, but it might have been Meredith. <laughs> Hard work and fun are only part of the story. Through our years, many of you have done amazing things. Successful experiential accomplishments like Ryan Furlong and Ryan McSherry, who finished third at the Tulane Mardi Gras Sports Law Moot Court Invitational. Or Tommy Denoa and Mike Camaster, who finished second in the Morad Sports Law Game Day Case Competition and Caroline Goldstein, who won the Montgomery County DA Summer Intern Trial Competition. Others have challenged themselves with demanding legal jobs. Jake Noon traveled to New York City and back during the week for an externship. Elena Brewer went to Ghana after 1L year, working specifically on cases of child labor forced slavery in the fishing industry of Lake Volta. Natasha Felder worked in the Montgomery County PD Juvenile Division, where she addressed sexual exploitation. Katie Duquette worked full-time last semester in our nation's capital at the SEC. John DeLea led a protest due to the great work he did in the flat clinic. Some of us made uh, lasting friendships, like Danielle, Grace, Lauren, Judy, Cassie, and Kristen. What up, ladies? Appreciate y'all for letting me barge into your mini brunches. Our smaller crews, like Allison Crow and Farza, our Cassandra Postagon and Talia, our Haley Post and Holly Jones, and guys develop similar bromances, like John Listman, Troy, Dylan, Will, Joe D, and Mike Nahaisky. You should have heard professors try to say Mike Nahaisky's name, from namaste to nunchucks. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and one more large group of friends, surely the last of times. Harini, Amanda Garger, Alex Murphy, Lauren Jordan, and the oddest friendship, Myself, Liz Galvin, and Jenna Peppinelli. Thank you, Liz, for the mini rides after I tore my Achilles. Thank you, Jenna, for being crazy Jenna. <clears throat> Some of you even found love in between studying at Villanova, like Brooke and Evan, Dave and <clears throat> Steph and Dave, Jackie and Adam, Pat and Kristen. Or maybe you experienced major life events, like Malia, who got married during law school. Or you got engaged, like my study abroad friend, Rachel Silver. Or you took the leap, like arguably the nicest guy in law school, like Mickey Nuccio did. Class of 2016, I'm amazed at all the things we have accomplished. You can say ah to the love. <laughs> but as I stand before you and I reflect more introspectively, I'm amazed just to be in front of you. I'm not supposed to be here. Statistically, I'm what Michael Gladwell would call an outlier, but not in the sense that I've completed 10,000 hours worth of practice, as he discusses in his book. I'm an outlier because I grew up <clears throat> in a neighborhood where the FBI called it the gun zone because of the high rate of gun violence. In my early years, I grew up in a multi-generational home with my mother, my grandmother, my uncle, and my brother. My brother and I shared a bed, and my mother slept on the floor. The first time a classmate of mine became a mother, I was in the seventh grade. My, high, my, <clears throat> my home was foreclosed on when I started high school. My high school's graduation percent was 44%. Myself and a friend who was here today were pallbearers for another friend who was murdered at 19. 
And no one in my family ever graduated college or went to grad school. And with my first job, my salary was higher than my grandmother ever made in one year for 50 years of work. I share these things with you, not for pity, but it's a true testament that through faith, hard work, and help from others, anything is possible. So on this day, So on this day, I'm thankful for my faith that has led me here, but for my folks. So thank you to my brother Talib for always holding me down. My mom Gwen for showing me what mental toughness is. My grandmother Josephine for being a stopgap, filling in in every hole. My uncle Maurice for supporting all my dreams and stealing the confidence in me at an early age and helped me realize that nothing is impossible. And to deuce when your father says it, it's the truth. Love my aunt Dottie and Stephanie. Lastly, I want to thank two mentors who are here, Dr. Lisa Jordan and Doris Allen for your insurmountable help and wisdom through the years. So as I near my close, I have five things to share with you all. One, chase the right thing. The late Steve Jobs gave a commencement speech shortly after he was declared cancer free. When he returned to the class, he told his students, remembering that you are going to die is the best way to know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. There is no reason not to follow your heart. To my class, I challenge you in everything you do. Always ask yourself, what is my heart telling me? If our compasses are oriented towards our hearts, I'm confident that we will make good decisions. Number two, create your own idea of success. The majority of us have loans. Trust me, I get the need for money. But I also hope that we don't walk away from our experience in Villanova with the sole purpose of making money. Because those ideals show a certain poverty of ambition. Realize success comes in many ways. Number three, like my man J. Cole says, love yours. I realize the pressure for us to be successful is imminent, but don't get caught up in chasing titles. So as you chase your dream, remember this song. Always gonna be a bigger house somewhere, you feel me? Doesn't matter though, as long as the people in yours love you dearly. Always gonna be a whip that's better than the one you got. Always gonna be some clothes that's fresher than the ones you rock but you ain't never gonna be happy till you love yours. So make sure you love your life. Number four, help somebody. When you do it, do it because you wanna help someone, not to post it on the ground or just meet your pro bono hours or in the hopes you will receive something. Help somebody because we only realize our true potential when we make a difference in someone else's life. One of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s strongest messages was, you don't have to have a degree to serve. You don't have to know Aristotle or the law of thermodynamics. All you need is to have a heart full of grace and a soul full of love. Two things that I know all my classmates have. Number five, don't ignore issues. Now in the years to come, we will continue to encounter all kinds of obstacles in the way of empathy. When people try to divide us, deny what we have in common and make diversions to push our minds towards other issues that have no importance. In these times, the easiest thing to do in the world is nothing. Nothing at all. Turn off the TV, swipe up and down on your phone, get off the computer, and walk away from the stories of Flint, Michigan's water crisis, or migrants fleeing war-torn Syria, or the alarming number of unarmed black men who are killed by a small minority of rogue police officers. To go about our busy lives, wishing these problems away, staying disconnected because it doesn't affect our day-to-day, -day. expecting someone else to take action, to remain detached, to remain indifferent, to remain safe. And that may be easy to do, but remember the words of Dr. King as he eloquently stated, nothing is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. So I challenge myself and every individual in the audience not to allow ourselves to be a danger to society through a practice of conscientious stupidity, but rather become a valuable asset in our communities. Class of 2016, you will be equipped to change laws policies, institutionalized discrimination, and unfair treatment of people. I ask, urge, and hope none of you fall silent on the things that really matter. Class of 2016, I hope I made you proud. So in the words of the late Tupac, keep your head up. And in the words of Notorious B.I.G., sky's the limit, keep pushing on. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you, Thomas. It is now with great pride that I call forward the JD graduates for the distribution of their diplomas. The faculty will call the names of each graduate and presenting the first graduate is Professor Doris Brogan. Elizabeth Ann Mullen. Maria Elena Santos Roca. Nicole Holden. Cynthia C. Bien. Candice Kashani. Elizabeth Cinque Mars Giordano. Michael Caulfield Dalton. Drew Stephen McGarren. Kevin George Cope. Brendan Edward Hatfield. Ryan Matthew Furlong. Ryan Edward McSherry. Anthony Daniels. Zachary Stephen Sterparo. Patrick J. Rohrbach. <laughs> Introducing the next graduates is my colleague, David Caudill. Andrew Estepani. Michael Gregory Ziolo. Grace A. Tufour. Kristen Marie Jones. Cassandra Justy. Daniel, Danielle Elizabeth Pierre, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Danielle. <laughs> Lauren Marie Deshavi. <laughs> Judy Gabriella Chaveri. <laughs> Anton Antonino Bart Iosia. Joe Villa. Robert Emile Lavoy. Ashley Kiefer. Michael Lipinski. Michael Jack Nuccio. Holland Ross Romali. The next names will be read by my colleague, Professor John Dobbin.
David Petroselli. Nicholas David Vincent Gregory. James Joseph Armelay Jr. Colleen Wearing Hill. Caroline Riley Robb. Elizabeth Rose Boino. Sarah Ellison Moyer. Patrick G. Doughty. Holly Elizabeth Jones. Kristen Marie Ash. Way to go. Karina Maria Meleka. Malia Rogers. Elena Brower. Ian William Forster. John Michael Delia. The next group of uh, uh, graduates will be called by my colleague and friend, Diane Pennies Edelman. Scott Marks Henry. John M. Noon. Kenneth Ernest Sorek. Lindsay Elizabeth Wilkinson. Miles Patrick Lund. Dalal El Nimani. Peter Michael Jennings. Michael J. Jordan. <laughs> Troy Joseph Murphy. <laughs> Matthew Janiscoli. <laughs> Joseph John Clementi. <laughs> Joseph Vincent DeShenzo III. Michael P. Nahaiski. <laughs> Dylan William Sioka. <laughs> William John Olson. <laughs> the next group of graduates' names will be read by my friend and colleague and one of our retiring colleagues, Ann Bowen Poulin. John K. Lisman. <laughs> Timothy Ryan Worrell. <laughs> Sarah K. Robinson. <laughs> Allison Sumi Crow. <laughs> Farzana Islam. Brittany Lynn Daniels. 
Natasha Deneen Felder. Catherine Marie Palladino. Amanda Julie Travers. Azade Irfani. Kimberly Keenan. Daniel P. Rowley. Joshua Matthew Nightingale. James Morrow LaBear. Sophie Danglan Nguyen. The next graduates will be presented by my colleague Michael Risch. Meredith Lyndon Lucier. Lourdes Vetrano. Sean Peter Gale. Steve Renald Bertil. Maria Taylor Hodge. Lauren Elise Kelly. Katazena Cordes. Jessica Watkins. Jillian E. Barton. Travis Richard Dunkelberger. Joshua Robert Javis. Daniel Stephen Eckenrode. Nicholas Christopher Needle. Andrew Philip Lawson. Tommaso Rafael Denoya. Rachel L. Weller. The next group of graduates will be read by my colleague Tuan Samahan. Andrew W. Moore. Matthew M. Coyne. Timothy Baker Bittler, Jr. Katie Arlene Duquette. Stephanie Marie Boggs. David Charles Magana, Jr. Donald William Van Buren, Jr. Kathleen Vermillion. Nico Joseph Rydleck. John Cotter Williamson. Logan Christopher Miller. Jamie Brett College. Graham Robert Bickle. Andrew William Zoller. Catherine L. Del Rosso.
Christopher Michael Brawley. The next group of graduates' names will be read by my colleague, Devira Siegel. Michael James Brown. Michael Edward Camastra. Kelson Anthony Lumpkin. Talia Rose Gafredo. Cassandra Postagon. Nina Rosemary Friel. Mary Raffaele. Caroline Rose Goldstein. Daniel Scott White. Nicole Julia Palladino. Edward Michael Dwyer, Jr. Charles J. Nucciaroni. Alex Junkin. Elizabeth Galvin. Jenna Renee Peppinelli. Paige Nicole Devine. The next group of graduates will be introduced by my colleague, Lou Sirico. Okay, our next graduate is Thomas Stanley Moore. Congratulations. Good speech. Rachel Ilana Silver. Congratulations. Alexandra Lubrano Picora. Congratulations. Haley Elizabeth Post. Congratulations. Sean Ryan Whitehead. Congratulations. Samuel B. Weinstock. Congratulations. Aaron Max Brown. Amanda Patricia Garger. Congratulations. Jordan Noel McGee. Congratulations. Jacqueline A. Herder. Congratulations. Adam Harrison Settle. Congratulations. Evan William Busteed. Congratulations. Morgan Brooke Razor. Congratulations. Harini Bupati. Get it right? Okay. Laura K. Napolitano. Congratulations. Alexandria Nicole Murphy. Congratulations. Frederick Henry Mitstarfer III. Congratulations. Abel Garza. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Okay. The next group of graduates will be introduced by my friend and colleague, Ellen Wertheimer. Bridget Kelly Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Campbell.
Melissa A. Ruth. Joshua Thomas Callow. <laughs> Melissa Saravo Henziger. <laughs> Sarah Janine Resitar. <laughs> Ellen Maureen Carey. Elizabeth K. Rose. John James Lukosik. Jordan Gregro. Christy La Rochelle. Cody Lee Wade. <laughs> Veronica Ruth Hogan. <laughs> Jonathan F. McCrozen. <laughs> Megan A. Farley. Jonathan Charles Millis. Matthew Weiss. Professor Ed Leva, Director of the Graduate Tax Program, will now present the recipients of the Masters of Law in Taxation. Professor Leva. Morgan S. Reibman. <laughs> Brianna Louise Guerrera. Soren F. Patel. Mark Matthew Delapaza. University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the degrees of Masters of Law in Taxation. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. No, no, just the four. Just the, the, the four, four. <laughs> our, our LLM candidates. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws in Taxation, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree, in testimony whereof you have received the diploma of the university, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Congratulations. You may be seated. Thank you. University President Father Peter Donahue will now confer the Juris Doctor degrees. Candidates who have been approved for that degree, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Father President, I present for the degree of Juris Doctor the candidates who have been approved by the faculty and whose names appear on the official list for graduation. In our program, 
you will note the names of the candidates who will graduate cum laude and magna cum laude. And deserving of special recognition are the following who graduate summa cum laude. Elizabeth Sinkmars Giordano and and Donald William Van Buren, Jr. By the authority committed to me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which throughout the world pertain to that degree. In testimony whereof, you have received the diploma of the university officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation, Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you and wish you the best of luck as you move on from Villanova University and the Charles Widger School of Law uh, to begin the new part of your journey. Uh, and thank you all for your involvement here, for your commitment to the Villanova University, to the law school, and to each other. Uh, it is very clear that you are a very tightly knit group of students. So. Uh, I want to uh, congratulate all of you on your accomplishments. And I want to thank uh, George Shell for his remarks. And he didn't tell me that he was leaving Coca-Cola, but he's uh, got a few more weeks, I think, left. And we are in the process right now of renegotiating our contract with Coke. So um, <laughs> maybe you could do something for me. <laughs> uh, you know, since we've had you here twice, you know, three times the charm, you know, that kind of, but thank you very much and good best of luck to you as you begin your new journey as well. And I had the privilege of meeting Thomas More. I've always wanted to meet Thomas More, but uh, <laughs> I had the privilege of meeting Thomas More right before we began the celebration today. And Thomas, congratulations. Good luck on your journey, wherever it may take you. I think you have the makings to be another saint. So good luck. <laughs> and as you heard at the beginning, there are five faculty members that are retiring at the end of this uh, commencement ceremony this summer. They will be moving on to other things, other responsibilities. Some of them are actually returning part-time, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, but they are, have decided to uh, begin other journeys. So to the five of them that we mentioned earlier today, I'm not going to name them all right now. But thank you for your teaching, for your research, and for your service to Villanova University and to the Charles Widger School of Law. Good luck to all of you. And you all know Dean Katanda is moving on to be in sun and fun and the Pacific Ocean on an island in Hawaii. It sounds really difficult, John. But uh, <laughs> last night, the faculty actually presented him with a surfboard. So it was, uh, it was uh, quite an evening. But John, thank you for everything you've done over the last 20-something years that you've been here. You've been a great partner in the last several years that you've been dean. Uh, both myself and Provost Majidi, thank you for everything that you've done for the law school, but particularly for all the students that have gone by. And even though, you know, it's nice there all the time, sunny, warm, no ties, no suits, it'll be, you know, all of these people are waiting for an invitation. <laughs> 
So please invite us to the beautiful islands of Hawaii. But best of luck to you. Good luck on your way. And you will begin a new journey. As I said last night to him, welcome to the club. Thank okay. you. So we're almost at the end of our 61st commencement. And, and while commencement is often viewed as the end of the academic studies, the word really means a beginning. And today is, is really a new beginning. It's the start of your legal career. Like others, so I, I just want to take a moment for us to reflect and thank those who have helped get us here today. I want to thank your families, especially your parents, your siblings, your spouses, significant others, and friends who supported you throughout the past three years. I want to recognize also Chuck Widger. The law school really has known no better friend, advisor, and benefactor extraordinaire. I want to say a special thanks to Father Peter Donahue and the entire Villanova University administration who have really steadfastly supported the law school and have really been instrumental in helping us move forward. And I want to recognize and thank our administrators, our staff, who handle all the details from orientation to fixing a computer to helping you find a book in the library. I know that many of you can point to one or more of these individuals, these dedicated professionals, who made a real difference at a critical moment over the past three years. And of course, I want to recognize and, and thank our faculty. Over the past three years, they've challenged you. They've inspired you. And collectively, they've taught you the skills to practice law according to the highest professional standards. Individually, I think you've seen a faculty member's role change from that of a teacher to a mentor. And it's one of the defining characteristics of Villanova Law. Students and faculty they work together to create an active learning environment, and in doing so, you find that you form relationships that last throughout one's careers. And I would particularly like to thank Professors John Cannon, Jack Dobbin, Abraham Gaffney, Jim Maul, and Ann Poulin. Professor Cannon, John, could you rise for just a second? Where's John. John Cannon is retiring after 45 years of service to Villanova. Thank you, John. <laughs> Professor Jack Dobbin. Jack, could you stand for a moment? <laughs> Professor Dobbin, a mainstay of Villanova for 47 years. 47 years of service. Thank you. Professor Jim Maul. Jim has been at Villanova and just concluded his 33rd year of teaching at Villanova. Thank you, Jim. Abe Gaffney, Professor Gaffney. He joined Villanova after a distinguished career in the judiciary, and he's been here for 22 years. Thank you, Judge Gaffney. And Professor Poulin, who was your third year brunch speaker. Professor Poulin, could you stand? <laughs> Ann Poulin has been here for 35 years. Thank you, Ann, for your service. You know, it's, it's often said lawyers are not good at math, but we know that's not true at the school where law meets business. So combined, you can do the calculation, I'm sure, in your head. It's 182 years of excellence in legal education that collectively represent. Let's give them one more round of applause for that. <laughs> now, as, as you've heard, this is my, my last graduation. And um, at the end of this academic year, I'll return home to my home state of Hawaii to become president of Hawaii Pacific University. It has been a real privilege and, and honor for me to serve as dean, but really to be a member of this community. Over the past few months, I have been asked time and time again, what will I miss most about my time here? Would it be the new student orientation where we come together to welcome the entering class. 
Perhaps it's Red Mass, where we celebrate the legal profession, invoke the guidance of the Holy Spirit for those who seek justice. Or perhaps it's watching Villanova win a third national championship. Indeed, I'm going to miss it all. But what I truly will miss most is this community. All of us, the faculty, the staff, the students. My wife told me I wasn't going to break up on this. I never do, do that, I apologize. <laughs> but um, I will miss this community. And if there's one event that I know I will miss most, it's this one. And it's because I save, we save the best for last, and that is you all. A special thank you to you all who have made this a very special community that is Villanova. And as we leave here together, I, th I think that you will find and learn something that I have already. And, and that is, wherever we go, we will always be you know, a f part of us, of who we are and who we will become, will always be connected with Villanova Law. So in closing today, we celebrate the past, but we also look to the future. And remember that what's behind and what's in front, they're important, but it's not as important as what's inside. It's what's inside in the end that really matters. And remember that inside, from today and forevermore, you will be Villanova lawyers. Congratulations, Godspeed, and aloha. And yes, come visit us in Hawaii. Thank you very much. Thank you. Following the benediction, please remain in your places by Dean Barton, Dean Agar, Dean Dempsey, Professor Mall, the marshals of the class of 2016 will lead the graduates from the pavilion. Dr. Barbara Wall, president for mission and ministry, will now offer the benediction. Let us take a moment to think about God's presence here with us and in each other. Oh God, we ask you to bless our women and men who graduate today, that the work you have begun in them from the time they were knit together in their mother's womb will continue to enable them on this journey of life to walk with humility, knowing the gifts that they have are from you. Give them the wisdom to know and understand the ways of justice and mercy May they never forget all the people, especially their family and friends, who have been part of their formation all these years. Bless them with good friends and mentors who will guide them in the pursuit of goodness all the days of their lives as they begin a new journey today as advocates and counselors. This year, we are especially grateful for many things. Our graduates and Dean Gatanda who has served this university for many years and shared his wisdom and gifts with us. We ask that you bless him and his family as he returns to Hawaii, his homeland, and may the university, Hawaii Pacific, will flourish under his leadership and goodness. Lastly, O oh God, inspired by your standing with the poor, the stranger, and the disadvantaged, we pray that you strengthen all of us gathered here to continue to stand with you and all the people we serve every day. And with the prophet Micah, we all pray that you, our graduates, may always remember his prayer. O oh people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen.